we can usually get these for almost nothing and we usually get 50 bucks or better for every one of these that we find. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about something that I have never sold for less than $50. Something I can usually get for just a few bucks. We're talking about diaries. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy, super special to garner at least 50 bucks. It has to be interesting, old, and at least have some sort of good content in it. Now, in many cases, these are also made by specific companies. This one is made by General Electric. So just as a General Electric collectible with nothing written in it, it could still go for 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks with writing, with information about colleges, about the Army Navy game from 1923, who won, statistics, uh, facts about the game, and other games as well, this can carry some pretty high value. So it doesn't have to be super old. This one's from the 20s. It has to just have something interesting, something unique, something talking about the time frame, what was going on in society in 1920s. That's where the value comes into play. Let's look at some other ones that have sold for some phenomenal money as well. Now usually the most expensive diaries will be tied to military action. A Revolutionary War diary could go for tens of thousands of dollars. Many people may run into them in an attic and not even know what they have. It'll be written in Old English. You might not be able to read it. You might not also think it carries much value because of condition. Condition isn't everything if it's readable content. The content written in it is where the value comes from, not the book itself. Now, Civil War soldiers' diaries go for some phenomenal money. There's quite a few of them out there. People think they're rare. They never show up. On any given day, there might be a dozen, two dozen or more on eBay just from the Civil War. There's tons of records of them selling for all the way up in the ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar range as well. Now the more famous or well known the person, obviously the higher the value. This is a fine example over three thousand dollars. Some of them may not even look like a diary to some folks because they were closable. They had a flap so you wouldn't damage the item itself. It's a typical diary. It has dates, other information in them, just like you would expect from a modern day diary. Here's another Civil War. This one's in a little better condition. The content is everything. So depending on actually what is in the diary, the value is based on. Just because it's by a famous person doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go for a ton of money. It has to have good content. Again, the content is what matters and why this one sold for over 2000 bucks. Now, a Civil War diary doesn't have to be from a soldier. It could just be from someone living somewhere where a battle happened or anything along that line, and they can still go for some phenomenal money. It doesn't, again, have to actually be from a soldier. Here's a fine example, around 2000 bucks for this one here. This one talks about General Forrest's arrival into their town, other issues, captures, prisoners of war, and things along that line. Hence why it went for $2,000 plus dollars. First-hand accounts of events that are well-known or written history books will always go for some phenomenal money. Now, many diaries like this have been turned into modern-day books, movies, and television series. That's where some of the ideas come from, hence the value again. These are all true-life experiences that the folks who wrote the diary actually experienced, and again, that's the value side of these. Now, here's another example from 1908, and these folks actually rode on a White Star Liner steamship, which would be the same line is the Titanic in 1908 so they took a world tour basically and it describes a lot of the activities that they did in some cases there can be things pasted in or glued into the book or stuffed into the diary itself sometimes those will add to the value especially if they talk about the item itself in the diary this person here acquired a card and it's actually talked about and mentioned in the diary she was on one of their ships and that's where the card came from that's why this one went for 500 bucks with a ton of bids so the content again doesn't have to be super old i've seen diaries from the 60s and 70s sell for hundreds of dollars so it doesn't again have to be based on the age alone now here's one by a prisoner of war from world war one 1914 not in the best condition what you would expect, though, from something that was in a prisoner of war camp. 
they may have needed paper to burn or to keep warm or anything else like that so surviving any of these no matter how many pages there are are, are phenomenally rare so when you do run into one of these the value is there missing the cover missing the back cover just being loose pages it doesn't seem to matter much at all this one went for four hundred and forty two dollars with many bids also Again, it, it has some historical content. It talks about life in a prisoner of war camp during World War I. That is the historical aspect. That is the value once again. Now, as I showed you in the beginning, diaries were made for advertising purposes as well. The one I showed you was from General Electric. This one here is from John Deere from 1873. With no writing in it whatsoever, this one would sell for hundreds of dollars just because of who made it. The advertising on it, the advertising aspect, this one does have a little content in it. Nothing like full-fledged documents, but this is just for the advertising purposes. It left your room to leave a diary. It had day planners, harvesting, farming, seeding, planting information in it as well. So it was like a almanac slash diary all in the same time and that's why this one went for over 400 bucks now obviously location of where the events happen can play a big role in this this is an 1898 diary from Shanghai China and this one's from a missionary from the West who went to Shanghai and talks about many experiences over there that's why this one went for over $300 with many bids the length or the amount of pages filled in may not matter either if the content is great on the few pages that may be in the book now the more information that's in the book the more actual written comments on day-to-day -day life will increase the value so if you have a big thick diary that lasted over a couple of years those always go for more than just say a couple months worth of entries so you're looking for the most amount of content in the diary you're acquiring now here's another diary that does come with some letters now we do sell military and personal love letters and things like that for pretty good money as well but when they're tied with a diary the value can go up immensely I would far rather grab a diary than a stack of letters most of the time but again it will depend on the content of the letters usually the diaries have deeper meaning they weren't meant to be read by anybody else so there's more true feelings usually written in a diary value wise we've paid as little as a couple of bucks for a pretty darn good diary up to 150 bucks for one from the civil war that we were able to sell for over a thousand dollars so it just depends on the quality who you're getting it from as well but many times at an estate sale and auction a diary is just thrown in like it's no big deal and I can get them for just a couple of bucks especially at estate sales most people don't hold much value they're unable to read it or don't want to mess with the script writing in them as well this one here is from World War one it's from the second division a specific regiment a company or something like that if they did something heroic or, or very well known for a battle their actions in a battle if it details activity like that the price can go phenomenally well now here's another interesting one this was written by the wife of the Illinois governor from the 1884 era here again it talks about life in the actual state capital and the whole works things going on in 1884 so it's interesting it's unique it is someone semi-famous at least semi well known enough to garner a little more interest it's missing a cover it's not even all there but it still went for well over two hundred dollars as you can see now as I said location can mean everything and how much it's worth this one's from the Wisconsin School for the Blind handwritten another 1800s one as well this one went for hundred and eighty two dollars with many bids as well it talks about an interesting aspect in life when there were specific schools just for the blind where there wasn't the established um, ways to do things like there are now Braille and other aspects which weren't maybe developed to the same extent they are nowadays so it's an interesting topic it's a unique first-hand account of what it was like in that school at that time for that specific length now here's one from 1931 through 35 and this is just by a normal everyday person but there's comments in here on the Lindbergh kidnapping Dillinger Will Rogers and things like that so when there's comments on things that happen say Pearl Harbor mentioned in one of these that would add to the value if it was from 
Hawaii at the point, it would add even more to the value. Someone who was actually firsthand able to watch something like that or had to deal with it and, and be involved in it, that again would add to the value. So this one's just an everyday diary from just a normal person. It still went for over $200, again, just because of the content. Now here's another one from World War II, but this one's a little more unique. It's a little interesting. This one talks about a soldier's voyage from America all the way over to France in 1918. It talks about ships they ran into, action, combat, and things like that. So it's an interesting one, 185 bucks. This one looks like it sold fairly quickly right after it was listed as well. This is one of those areas where either you list it super, super high not knowing or you list it with a high starting bid and list it as an auction. You never know with some of these sorts because there could be one little aspect, a couple lines in a diary that make it extremely valuable to collectors of these sorts of things. Now here's an earlier one from the 1850s. This one has poetry in it. One of the interesting aspects on something like this the poetry, if it was written by the person who wrote the diary, would be in the public domain. The person has long since been deceased for more than the required time frame at this point. So it is free and open for someone to use the poems in these sorts of books, as long as they are old enough and there's no claim on them at present. Most of the time, the diary, though, are just one person's mind, one person's thoughts. It's intimate look into that person's feelings and events that happened to them during those time frames. Again, that is the value, the actual content, the writing, the, the clear daily activities that were written out by the person who owned the diary. And this one here went for 159 bucks. I honestly hope that gives you some idea because far too many people walk by these. I can pick them up fairly regularly. It's not some super rare thing, but they're usually small. They usually don't look like much. They usually are dark, dirty. They usually have just a plain looking cover. So many people will walk right by these without assuming anything anything. But I nab up every single one that I can get my hands on. As I said in the beginning, I don't think we've ever sold one for less than 50 bucks. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. America's classic thrillers come to life. The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew Mysteries. An adventure into suspense. There's got to be a way out of here. <laughs> you used to go with her? Forget that. Oh, Professor, do ghostly footprints? The adventures of America's favorite young detectives come to television. Follow that ghost. The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew Mysteries.